2013 is a very special year for Porsche because we celebrate the 50 year anniversary of the Porsche 911. We are very happy that we have a huge collection of cars and uh, yeah, for this year we take some very special cars out and present it to the audience for the first time ever. Unlike never before, Porsche is giving you the opportunity to reveal these secret 911 models. For each model, you'll have to answer one question. The entrant, who is quickest to answer all three questions correctly, will win the competition. You will be asked questions on the following unique 911 models. 911 Aerodynamic Concept 911 SC East Africa Rally Car 911 Mid-Engine 911 V8 The first 911 Turbo 911 San Reno Rally Car The Porsche 911 is the most successful race car in motorsports ever. It has made more than 20,000 race victories, and not only on circuits, as well as in rally racing. It started in 1965 at the Rally Paris Dakar, and another example for this rally ever was the East African Safari Rally in the second half of the 70s. So this car participated in 1978 at the East African Safari Rally. Very interesting car, it's very close to a production car, just the modifications uh, with the suspension of the car, and some body shell protections on the car, but the rest is more or less a normal 911. This car was leading the rally for a long time, but just a few hours before the end of the race, it uh, uh, hit a big rock in, 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 a, in a river and uh, so the rear suspension was damaged. This was the reason why this car only became second. After this East African Safari Rally, which was the hardest rally in the, second, in the 70s, the car retired and came directly to the Porsche Museum, where it still is in its original condition. That's unique on this car. In our museum's collections, we have many unique cars and many prototypes, which were never seen uh, outside the museum's facility. One of the examples is the Type 965. This was a prototype, kind of a cheaper uh, successor of the Porsche 959 in the second half of the 80s. And one of our prototypes is very special because it has a V8 engine on board. Yeah, if you take a look on the 965 prototype, you can see that this car is camouflaged because it was tested on public roads. Yeah, the 965 was just a prototype, it was a car which never made it into serial production and with these prototypes Porsche tested many different engine uh, concepts. Yeah, and one of these on engines came from our friends from Audi because this car has a water-cooled V8 engine from the Audi V8 uh, in it. 911 with a V8, that's really unusual because all the other 911s have flat 6 engines. I think seriously nobody had in mind to, to bring a car into production with an Audi V8 but it was just a test if such a concept could have a future and uh, luckily they kept on building flat 6 engines and I think that's uh, the heart of all 911s and uh, this was definitely a good decision. The most unusual is definitely the uh, prototype of the Boxster with a Porsche 911 body. In the early 90s when Porsche started creating the idea of, of building a new sports car like the Boxster, it was a big secret. If you look at this car from outside, it has a normal appearance of a Porsche 911 Turbo. Some details which are different, you can see okay, it has some, some different flaps, they have some modifications on the rear spoiler and uh, yeah, of course uh, the rear window is camouflaged that people can't see that the engine is uh, sitting on the back seat. 
the result was that the technical layout of the mid-engine car was tested under the body of a normal 911. So nobody could make out what's under the hood. Here's the prototypes we have in our museum's collection. They're a great example that Porsche is a very innovative uh, company and that our engineers always come up with some new ideas. That's another unique car we have. Another unique car we have in our collection is a 911 aerodynamic study from 1984. If you compare this uh, prototype to a normal 911 from 1984 G model, it has some special details. Uh, if you look uh, at the rear spoiler, that's absolutely different. The car has some, uh, some covered uh, uh, wheels. Uh, it also has a different front spoiler. And at the very end, all these ideas, uh, they made it possible to have an aerodynamic coefficient of 0 0.27. A normal 911 at this time had a coefficient of 0 0.40. So this car was uh, leading into the future. If you take a closer look at this aerodynamic study, you can always find some, some elements which made it to serial production later on. So this car is uh, still a G model, but it already has some details of a 964 and a 993 as well. So our engineers took some ideas of this study and used it later on for the serial production. So the aerodynamic study is an example for the ideas of the Porsche engineers which came up in Weiser and made it into serial production sometimes 10 years later. One of the unique cars we have here in the collection is the very first 911 Turbo which was the birthday present for Louise Pich in 1973. She's a sister of Ferry Porsche, the daughter of Ferdinand Porsche, and she's one of the key figures of the Porsche history. It's not just the very first one you can make out, it was her private car. First of all, she didn't want to have the turbo badge on the back, if you look at the windows, you can see that just the side and the rear windows are painted, they're colored. The front window is not colored at all because Louise Pich was an, also an artist and she liked to paint in the car. She was, she was driving in the Alps and uh, in, sitting in the car she was painting. And for that reason she didn't like to have a colored window because she wanted to have the real colors when she did her artistic work. One of the best known Porsche race drivers is Walter Röhrl, who is still our brand ambassador. One of his cars is also in the museum. We have the 1981 911, which he used at the Rally San Remo in 1981. And he almost did win this rally, but then there was a technical problem with the, with the rear axle and he couldn't finish the rally. I had this car in our collection for a long time and uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, we restored the car completely and we sent Walter and his original car together with his co-driver, driver Christian Geisdorfer, to the Rally Targa Tasmania. He was leading the pack, but then uh, the same problems as in 1981 appeared and uh, yeah, our mechanics could fix the car, but there was no, no chance for him to win the rally and uh, I hope that Walter will take this chance again and maybe in some years. The 911 San Remo rally car is another unique addition to our collection because it's one of the race cars of Walter Röhrl, who is our hero. 